Shabina, thank you for joining us. Thank you for inviting me. What brings you to the World Energy Congress? Uh, this is not the first World Energy Congress we are attending. Uh, we have been to the first one in Montreal many years ago when ITER just got started. And for us, it's very important to appear on the radar of the world energy community. You know, And it's really, really encouraging to see that we made a big leap forward that the people know about us. We don't have to explain from scratch. You know, the people are sort of educated about sort of fusion, that there is a different nuclear energy uh, next to fission. And um, they have a very good idea of what ITER is and where we are. So that is very encouraging. And this is what we try to do here. And of course, we like to stay in touch with the big players in the energy game, you know, so it's all about communication here. So Peter has now very much become common knowledge. What do you think is most exciting people around the world about the promise of ITER? Fusion, and ITER is the, uh, the spearhead of the worldwide fusion approach. Uh, it's the largest project of all the fusion projects, and um, we have 35 nations assembled under the ITER flag. The promise of fusion is really, uh, it's one of the only or maybe the only candidate to really replace the fossil fuels and to deliver base load power. Fusion installations will, at least for the be in the beginning, always be big installations, massive construction projects. So it's not really um, considered to be an alternative for small countries or flat countries with um, medium population. But if you look at these uh, big mega cities, you know, when we talk about Tokyo, or Shanghai, or the huge industrial hubs, so fusion could be really um, the alternative for the future. So, Frieza, what are the next steps? Where are you in the development cycle? Where are you in the build? And then what happens next? So we are in the middle of machine assembly. The ITER machine is being assembled in the south of France, near Marseille. And all the support systems supporting the machine, like the heating devices, the cooling devices, so this is all done. It's all commissioned. Yeah. So we are actually ready to go. We just need a few more pieces to bring together, weld it together, and then we will soon press the button and see if uh, it works the way we think it works. And do you have a timeline for that, or is it just so new nobody quite knows? In a few weeks from now, in the middle of June, the ITER Council will get together. This is the uh, advisory board with the representatives of our governments. And uh, our management will present the baseline, sort of what we intend to do over the next years, coming years. You know, sort of um, there will be a phased approach to full power generation until we come to really full power using deuterium and tritium. These are our fusion fuels with full power outcome because the main goal of ITER or the physical goal of ITER is to generate 500 megawatts of output power for at least one hour. With 35 countries coming together to build the machine, why is that a hugely positive thing beyond just the scientists? I'm very grateful for this question because uh, I'm uh, in charge of media relations and I always encourage people to come and visit us, journalists, you know, not just to talk over the phone because you have to see and experience ITER. ITER is much more than engineering and science. We call it the ITER planet. Behind this technology and all the steel structure they see in the hall, there are human people that have dreamt about this, that have designed it, and that are now making it happen. So what happens next? So it is written down in the ITER agreement that we have to give this accumulated knowledge back to the public. And this is what's happening now, because... While ITER was sort of uh, growing up, the private fusion sector has taken off crazy. So there are now more than 60 private startups all around the world, basically in the United States and in Europe. They are all coming together at the ITER headquarters end of May. So we have a three-day workshop. It's not a conference, it's really a workshop. We will talk about the knowledge we gained over the course of the years, our experiences, the mistakes we made to help them to avoid making them. And there is a lot to exchange and to talk about. And this is, I think, going to be the, uh, the start of a worldwide collaboration in fusion because we all have the same goal. We want to deliver fusion energy. So obviously this year's theme is redesigning energy for people and planet. ITER is clearly very much a part of that transition. To your mind, where does it sit in that? Fusion will never be the silver bullet solution. Right, So we will 
always have to talk about the big potpourri, right? So, I mean, honestly, we say that fusion will not really deliver fusion energy or, or energy to the grid before the mid of the century. I mean, talking about distribution worldwide, yeah. Maybe there will be some some um, projects, you know, sort of including ITER, you know, sort of giving the proof of principle, but really talking about serious fusion energy production to the grid second half of the century. I think this is a safe bet. So in the meantime, the renewables will have to build the bridge. You know, we have to rely on the renewables and what we hear here is encouraging. Indeed, indeed. Well, Sabina, thank you very much for your insight. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much for inviting me here. Thank you.